In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, Too Sexy gets some mad ignition coils. Weird. Welcome so to fun. another episode of Mighty Come On. This is my little unicorn. These so are my coils. Do. I don't yeah. know why. I think because I've gone from one coil with a spinning thing, which would be that, to like four individual coil things. Oh, good, man. But this is exciting because today, Too Sexy is going to get some LS1 coils. Now, why are LS1 coils awesome? Well, because they're on the LS1s, which is the world and potentially the internet's favorite engine because it's a big V8 thing. But the coil packs that come on them are good, used in lots of aftermarket applications. That's just weird. Um, yeah, and um, and while I was doing my like kooky conversion on my 180, sticking all this ugly stuff on my car, you were working with Dave, doing some mad stuff on your car. And what I will say is some ingenious techniques, Martin. Some homebrew garage style tractor sh Very, very cool. Yeah. Um, so here it is. Let's do it. The first thing I've got to do is jack up my car because there's two main areas letting Too Sexy down. One is how ridiculous the front of the car looks with that epic sex spec inner cooler and the other is the ignition system not coping with all that boost from my 80 spec Subaru Turbo. First, the hacked up front bar needs to come off, which is a simple matter of some cable ties getting chopped. It will be replaced with another hacked up bumper later on and then the massive intercooler can also be removed. That's huge. That's enormous. It's heavy too. Like that's... You reckon five kilos? What happened to the back of it? I don't know, I think it rubbed on whatever that is. It rubbed, someone put a bit of hose there in a cable tie and then the cable tie and the hose rubbed through the cooler. Sounds like ass. Doesn't sound good, does it? Actually sounds like ass. So that's a 76 mil, 70 mil thick cooler. Looks like, I don't even know how big that is, but that's enormous. That's too big. It's too big. Well, it's too big for 100 kilowatts. Like, you do not need a cooler this size for 100 kilowatts. This was all show. Yep. Because um, that, that, that's like a 500 horsepower cooler, isn't it? Yeah, up to, yeah, for sure. And even a, yeah, even a cheapy, cheapy one is going to support that kind of power. Like, that's bigger than what's on Supergrams, and that makes 280 kilowatts. Yeah, right. So there's no way you need something that big. And what I want to do is package it so much more neatly in there because there's, no, like, there's just no easy way to fit that on. Yeah. So I'm even going to pull that old bumper reinforcement off as well and fix that. And then neatly stick the cooler up in this space here, redo the pipe so they come in around the side and the whole bar will just go dunk. Yeah. So one of the problems I have with this setup, the aluminium piping's cool. There's a lot of time and effort that's gone into that, but it's worn away in some areas because it's been rubbing on things that are steel, so it's going straight through the aluminium. They're also really big. The outlet of that turbo is around two inches, and there's really no need to go straight into a big pipe, particularly with a turbo that small. The factory car that that was initially on made about 150 kilowatts. You'd be lucky to get them to 170 or 180 with that turbo. So really, there's no point having all this massive piping taking up all this space. So what I'm planning to do is to run smaller two-inch piping around into this new cooler and then go use the existing two-and-a-half-inch pipe back up into the throttle body. Bye-bye. There will be a weight saving by using a smaller intercooler, which also means no more ugly pipes hanging out the front of the car. Meanwhile, I've called in some reinforcements to help me upgrade my old-school ignition system to something a lot better. Welcome, Dave. Thanks. What are we doing, man? What's happening? I'm not sure. Okay, good. All right, have fun gonna, with that. We're we'll see do, you guys later. We're going to do some ignition <laughs> system bits. Yeah, oh. yeah, we're going to improve. Great. You know how it doesn't like start if you leave it for too long and it won't fire and a spark and it fouls the plugs. Yeah, my no, car? That. Well, with that oh, as your well, car. we're going to fix my car. Yours is a later thing. Okay, cool. All right, have fun Come with Come on, look, Dave. While Team Thrashed Out 90s 180SX is fiddling with their rear end, we're getting nerdy up front. It'll flow fine. Like I think, I think, I think that will be okay, because that 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 one. And it's similar size to mine. It's just longer. Oh, it's okay. Oh, is yours? Mine's more square. And like seventy mil thick, approximately. Yeah, same, 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 same. same. Yeah. Because the original one, not only is it massive, it weighs about I don't know five, ten kilos, something like that. Mm. Um, and I think it's just oversized, because that's bigger than what's on Supergrams. Yeah. Wow. And Supergrams makes two eighty. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. And doesn't heat soak. So, I mean, I'm going to keep an eye on this. I'll put some temp sensors and stuff and see how it goes because it may be too small, but I'd rather go with that and fit it all in and have it not look like a dog's breakfast at the front. We can tell. We can put another air temp sensor on it up here somewhere yeah. instead and move this one over here so yep. we can get a true 
inlet. Oh, is that inlet air temp sensor there, is it? Is, yeah. Oh, but okay. it's a closed tip air temp sensor, yep. so it probably will just hold heat and heat soak for a little while. Yep. So we can use an open tip one and put it before the thrower body so we know ah, what's cool. actually going in. Yep. We could probably put another one on the hot side yeah. as an EGT. We yep. can just watch what the EGT does. Yep. We can see how efficient the air going in yep. out. Once it heats up. Temperature differences. And it's gonna be it's gonna be moving around the tracks. So it's gonna get plenty of air through it. I'm gonna get rid of this air con condenser too, so just there's less um less stuff in the way. No air con? It has air con. Why don't you kid? No. <laughs> let's get rid of it. Um, no, that sounds really, really cool. But first up we're gonna do ignition system. Mad. Alright, let's do it. And then you'll be onto your third front buff? Yes. Twenty dollars each, thirty dollars each. So good. Yeah. Beautiful. Mad. What we're essentially doing today is deleting our original um, dizzy based ignition system and we're going to replace it with coils. Now coils is what you find on most modern cars. These are LS1 coils, I understand it? Yeah, yeah. so just an LS1 coil that you would find on any sort of Chev LS motor. And that is the thing that, sp that sends a spark down into the spark plug. Yeah. That's what yeah. requires a lot of energy, so right? So there's a little module built into these just to save on complexity and wiring. Yeah. Um, aftermarket, these are really, really popular yep. for that exact reason. And all this needs is a signal. It needs power. It needs a signal from the Haltech to tell it when to go. Yep. And that's sort of it, and right? Ground. On the ground as yeah, well. And then that's pretty much it. And you often see these, so on the, on the V8s, they're mounted up on the rocker cover, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna give it a go. We're gonna try and just arrange them somehow here with little leads coming off them. Yeah, something like that. Yep, and I believe it's artistic and go oh, full, right. angle, full angle. Oh, I see. Oh, that'd be cool. Just for maximum show car ability. <laughs> um, cool, all right, and so yeah. they need to be triggered somehow because the Haltech needs to know what the motor's doing and currently it, it doesn't, right? It doesn't, that's correct. So it's just got a very, the simplest form of trigger yep. in the distributor. Yep. Um, so we're gonna try and put a reset on the camshaft somewhere else, only cause we're limited a little bit by room over here. Yep. So on the other side, we're gonna try and mount another sensor. Yeah, which is this thing. Yeah, which is a little uh, Hall effect sensor. Right. And its purpose is just to, to tell us where the cam is. That's cause right. if we know where the crank is and where the cam is, we can do sequential ignition which means it's only firing the cylinder that is at the stroke that requires That's a spark exactly right which is kind of like the distributor yeah but a much better and um, which gives us when we're tuning performance wise when we're tuning we're we get only full control one coil per engine cycle right which is really really cool does that change and the way that our injectors work too yeah exactly right and our injectors as well we're gonna we're gonna make that a little bit more complex as well instead yep. of firing them all at the same time mm -hmm. uh, we're going to make them fire per Per cylinder. Which is interesting because it's a that's a fairly old school kind of mm. and simple and I guess reliable way Still of doing it. The job. But once you start leaning on it, yeah. you'll find the ends of it. Because even at 100 kilowatts, we started to see the ignition system break down. Exactly right. And yeah. every time I start it cold and all that kind of stuff, I get like fouled plugs and other dramas, which hopefully this will help us get around. Definitely. Another 90s car that ran into ignition system issues was our white MX-5. To solve that, we used Toyota coil on plug packs. Due to the way the spark plugs are positioned above the exhaust manifold on Too Sexy, this time we're going to use short leads that run from the coils to the spark plugs. The triggering wires need to be run from inside the car at the ECU and then the coils position somewhere in the engine bay. We've opted for on top of the rocker cover, which is similar to how they're mounted on factory motors. It is possible to remote mount them elsewhere in the engine bay, but it means much longer leads from pack to plug. Because <laughs> yours makes 150 stock engine. Um, yeah. One, yeah, on how much boost? On, that was about 17 pounds. 17 pounds. Do you run it that daily or put a bit less? It's got 20 pounds in it. 20 pounds? <laughs> Every day now. <laughs> Stock motor. Mm -hmm. That's incredible, on, on ethanol. Mm -hmm. He runs 20 pounds in his daily one of these all the time, on E85. Like drives so to the so shops with 20 pounds through it. And it's a that's stock engine. Right? So much that's fun. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Stock yeah that's just a running tune. Yeah. That's the that's just, just a running tune. Okay. Right? Yeah. I think what's awesome as well, similar to last time, is it come over here, it's like your intercooler's gone, your bumper's gone, half your engine's gone. We put in a brake light. We're just going to put and drill a hole in the actual. In the pulley? In the pulley, yeah. Oh, so we're using the pulley for this? I thought we were going to use the cam or something clever. No, nah, nah, we need a pulley. The cam on this side. There's nothing really that we can do on this side, so I'm just going to put it actually in the pulley. Awesome. So we're going to drill, do is drill a hole in the pulley. Yep. And Man. Put a small little bolt with a little nut. Um, what size hole? Like this little six mil, like six mil hole. I got, I got a many. Ooh, yeah. We're going to install a Hall effect sensor which turns a magnetic field into a voltage. The Haltech can then sense where the bolt is which gives us a reference point for what position the cam is at. 
This is what allows us to bring our injector and ignition firing system out of last century. I'm noticing a bit of a theme about like things that have been happening on Mighty Car Mods lately, of which this is part of that theme, yep. is we're starting to kind of mangle more different bits from different places Love and it's it. like a multicultural, multi-timed thing. Yep. Like the Mini, you've got an English Mini that was a JDM model yep. that's got a German supercharger um, that was modified in the UK yep. being run by an Australian Haltech yeah. running on ethanol that's made down in the country somewhere. Yeah. And it's like, I, I think that's just really exciting. I think you're getting it's the really... best of different worlds and you're doing the big I think it's a really fun time to be around this kind of stuff because you can use modern technology to make old stuff perform way better than you ever thought possible. Yep. And a lot of those components are portable. Like, you buy LS1 cores and you buy a Haltex M50, you can take it with you to your next car. Yeah. Like, that's probably worth more than this car, but the point is you can learn, you can put it on, you can make it better, you can have that experience and that enjoyment, go and use the car. And when you're running into a wall, pull it off and put it in a 180 and go do a skid. Hey Amen. That's it. Co co just... Everyone quote that and write that everywhere right now. I just said something clever, didn't I? That doesn't happen very often. Well, it just it needs to be quoted, stuck over a photo of your head and then put on Pinterest or some other like <laughs> weird thing. No, no, That's no, no, what no. I'm looking forward to seeing. All right. It needs to be happened. I'm gonna It needs to be happened, everyone. In celebration, <laughs> I'm gonna in celebration I'm uncovering the gooch and we're gonna we're gonna drill the thing near the gooch. You know the word dumb apparently has a silent M in it. What? What? Silent N. No. M. There's a silent M in the word dumb. Isn't it a silent B? That's also true. We positioned our sensor in the plastic cam cover, which was looking awesome until we realised that we got it wrong. So had two more goes at it until the sensor lined up with where we'd be able to position a bolt. The idea is to get the head of the bolt as close as possible to the end of the sensor without impacting it when it's spinning at 7,000 RPM. This will give the clearest and easiest signal to make sure there's no noise and problems when the car is running. With that done, it's time to come up with a mounting solution for the coil packs themselves and finish off the wiring from the ECU and into the coils. Tell me all about this extravagant creation, Martin. This extravagant creation using hardware shop right angled multi-drill steel, which is all I could find. Yep. Um, I just made a little mounting system for those to go because it's a good spot for them up on the rocker these, cover. Man. Coils, pretty serious looking. You're the Willy Wonka of the coil world. How so? I have no idea. It's not a land of pure imagination, my friend. It is real. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but so I've got I was the thinking good... of the uh, how the performance of your car. Being oh, in the land of pure emissions. My car is a golden ticket car, my friend. Wow. Hey, this is awesome because it's just going to sit up there and we're going to wire some, some leads into it, the storeroom for the oil thing, and then we're going to put some leads. I'm going to have to get some shorter Maybe leads, though. Have you made sure that still fits? I haven't checked. Of course I haven't checked that. No way. Where is it? I don't know. Can we see if it fits? Yeah, we can try. There's a lot of mess. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it um, fits really, really well. Yeah, yep. Oh. Boom. <laughs> so it fits enough. That was close. Yeah. That was close. Um, but that's it, man. I just welded that on. So that should do How the How's welding? This to Fine, because it's, it's just steel to steel. That's some galvanized. So you just strip it back, wire wheel it back, wire wheel that back, and then just MIG it on. Awesome. The bit of heat. It's actually quite good. They just need to be held in place and out of the way, and then the leads will come straight and down. Not flap around too much. Yeah. So that's it. So that will go onto there. That's great, man. Bonk. It looks so stock. <laughs> you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> All that's left to do is bolt the coils down tight and then terminate the wiring with plugs that come included with the new coils. It is possible to buy these brand new with everything required, but if you get them second hand, make sure you get the loom and plugs from the donor engine. We then supply the coils with a ground, 12 volts and an individual trigger directly from the ECU. We then tell the tuning software that we've now got individual coil packs and the car will start and run better than before, but we'll need a full retune to take advantage of the extra ignition power that's now available. And this is just the outro, man. What do you mean? This is the outro. No, nah, man, coil packs are serious business. Yes. No, 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 coil packs are very important. This is super um, awkward. If, you're, if you have an old, too sexy, like, beast uh, that has an old what? sort of distributor oh, ignition system, 
um, then obviously individual coil packs are gonna be way better, gives you way more control. You get a stronger spark, which is really cool. Um, meaning that this your ignition is so system is gonna handle it when you are powering down the straight at the racetrack, um, which is awesome. Martin, uh, next, so I'm really happy ne with next episode we're working on the 180 again. Are we? And that's what, that's what I'm pretty happy about. Yes. This is the, this is, yeah, we've, I, I think I checked the other day, I think we've done about 450 videos. Wow, that makes this sense, because look what we're doing now. Across this and MCM TV 2 which is our second channel, where you can watch the Unicorn Circuit and other things. This is by far the strangest outro we've ever done. Yeah. Um, I, it, it makes me really uncomfortable. That car makes me strange. Uh, anyway, so of course you can follow our balls on the face balls, face balls, dot balls, and that's Forward it. Forward slash LS1 coils. Yes, see you <laughs> next time everybody. I'm just gonna fat my way over this way. Bye everyone. Bye Martin. What you're actually doing is being a jellyfish. See you mate. Nope. Bye. That was weird. <laughs>